terrible birds, and other dangerous birds of prey of the prehistoric world. After the disappearance of the dinosaurs from the face of the Earth, which ruled the planet for many millions of years, many evolutionary niches were vacated, which began to be occupied by representatives of other species. Including the place of the most important and largest predators became vacant. It is extremely interesting that this niche was occupied by the closest descendants of giant lizards, birds. True, in order to become the most dangerous creatures on the planet, these birds began to imitate the recently extinct theropods in many ways. They grew to enormous sizes and lost the ability to fly. We're talking, of course, about the so-called terrible birds, or Foracos. From this video, you'll learn how these birds of prey began to dominate other animals and how their descendants live now. If you like the videos that appear on the Dinosaur Age channel and you want to be the first to know about their release, then we advise you to subscribe to our channel. We also encourage our viewers to actively share their impressions in the comments and express their opinion with the help of likes. The most dangerous predators of the late Cretaceous period were undoubtedly large representatives of theropods. These dinosaurs were often large and walked on two legs. A typical representative of this family was the most famous of the dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus rex. He, like other representatives of theropods, had powerful hind limbs, and these dinosaurs practically did not use the almost atrophied front legs. It is no longer a secret that most of them were covered in feathers, and if it were not for the huge mouth studded with sharp teeth, outwardly they could well resemble strongly grown up modern birds. And some theropods of the late Cretaceous period already had a completely normal beak. But due to the fall of the giant meteorite that caused the end of the dinosaur era, we were never able to find out what the further evolution of these monsters could have led to. Birds, on the other hand, simply copied the theropod hunting style and developed the same tools that had been proven over the years of evolution. One such bird-like dinosaur from the late Cretaceous period was the Gigantoraptor, discovered in China in 2005. On the set of a documentary film about dinosaurs, the scattered remains of a young individual were accidentally discovered. After a study of which scientists recognized this dinosaur as a representative of a separate previously unexplored species. Despite the fact that its name translates as giant predator, the discovered new species was an omnivore. Based on the remains found, it was possible to restore the size of this individual. The Gigantoraptor, which died at the age of 11, was 8 meters long and weighed about 2 tons. From the discovered incomplete lower jaw, Calculate the dimensions of the skull of this giant. Its length was about half of a meter. Gigantoraptor had toothless flat jaws. Scientists suggest that they passed into a horny beak. The forelimbs of the Gigantoraptor were elongated and possibly ended in claws brushed with the thumb set aside. There is no direct evidence that these dinosaurs were covered in feathers, but since they were close relatives of the Oviraptors, this option is quite acceptable. Approximately 20 million years ago, the place of large predators was taken by a terrible bird, Fororacos. Traces of 18 species of this family have been found all over the planet so far. These were large, flightless birds up to 3 meters tall and weighing up to 300 kilograms. They were the most common in South America, but after the formation of the Isthmus of Panama, predatory mammals moved to the continent and, most likely, Ferraricos could not stand the competition with more adapted competitors. The main weapon of the Ferraricos was a powerful large beak. With the help of quick and accurate blows of this beak, the bird killed its prey and then ate it, cutting it into small pieces. Most scientists are of the opinion that these birds of prey fed mainly on small animals such as rodents or snakes. Scientists have divided all currently known Ferraricos into five subfamilies. They differ in size, location, and time of residence, but all these birds are united by the fact that they were predators and could not fly. 
and use a powerful beak as their main weapon. Despite the assumption that the Ferraricos could live on all continents, the facts say that these birds dominated the animal world of South America and partly lived in North America. There is no scientific confirmation of their presence in Africa or Eurasia, but similar remains officially found there have not been assigned to this family. Among the many species of Ferraricos were the most diverse birds. The largest representative of the family is considered to be the Titanus valeri. These giants reached a height of 2.5 meters and weighed more than 200 kilograms. Titanus was a rare member of the family that was able to compete with large cats and other predatory mammals in the vastness of North America. It is believed that he was a good runner and used the ambush method of hunting to hunt larger mammals such as horses or bison. 15 million years ago, on the territory of modern Argentina, another giant representative of the Ferraricos family, Kalinken, lived. This bird grew up to 3 meters and weighed up to 275 kilograms. The length of the Kalinken skull was about 70 centimeters and the beak reached 45 centimeters. Scientists believe that these predators were distinguished by high running speed and could pursue their prey by hitting it with their powerful beaks. There is also an opinion that the Kalinken, like other large Ferraricos, could drive away smaller predators from prey using their impressive dimensions. Brontaurus can be called the heaviest of the Ferraricos. Its name translates as Thunderbird. And this heavyweight lived in Argentina about 11 to 17 million years ago. With a height of 2.8 meters, he could reach a weight of under 400 kilograms. At the same time, it is believed that Brontornis could run fast and pursue their prey for a long time. One of the few representatives of the Ferroricos family that lived in Europe was Eleutherornis. Representatives of this subfamily did not differ in large sizes and, perhaps, therefore, they could live quietly next to large predatory mammals. The growth of these birds of prey ranged from 70 to 100 centimeters. They simply did not take away their main prey from large felines and cave bears. Eleutherornis lived about 41 to 43 million years ago in the territory now occupied by Switzerland and France. Previously, all Ferraricos were attributed to the family of cranes. But now, they, together with their modern descendants, are singled out in a separate family of Cariamaforms. It is by the habits of the Cariama which gave the name to the family. The scientists largely determine how its giant ancestors behaved. The crested Cariama lives in South America, successfully hunting small animals and snakes. With the height of about 1 meter, it weighs only 1.5 kilograms. Cariams fly very badly, but they can run at speeds of up to 30 kilometers per hour and jump to a height of up to 2 meters without the help of wings. Remarkable enough is their way of hunting poisonous snakes. These birds are not resistant to snake venom, and in a fight with a deadly enemy, they can only hope for their speed and mobility. They easily evade snake attacks and use their powerful claws. It is possible that the weapon of the Ferraricos was not only a beak. Most often, the crested Kariyama emerges victorious from a dangerous fight. Death by snake bite is a rarity among these fearless birds. Of course, Kariyama now cannot compete on equal footing with mammals of prey, but she has found her ecological niche in this world and successfully exists in the neighborhood with both predatory mammals and flying birds. In the same way, her distant ancestors, the Ferraricos, fought for a place in the sun, competing with more fit rivals for several million years. We are grateful to the viewers who watched this video to the end. You can learn more about the life of other prehistoric monsters and their modern descendants from other videos on our channel.